Welcome back and happy Resurrection Day everyone. Today we're going to set up and configure FL Digi, our primary communication software package. Because we'll need to adjust some audio settings within the software, we'll first need to connect our Raspberry Pi computer to our radio transceiver with the DigiRig sound card interface. I'll use this HT today, however we could just as easily connect to a mobile type radio for greater power. The setup process will be very similar, but the radio side cable will look different. Go on digirig.net and do a search for your radio's model to find that specific cable for your radio. We'll start by setting up the settings on the radio. We're not going to use any sort of complicated or expensive radios with cat control. We're going to keep things very simple and use the radio's front end interface to change to the frequency we want. From there, we'll need to turn the squelch all the way off, and how you accomplish that is up to your radio's manufacturer, but I've already done that before we started with this ICOM HT, and I want you to hear there's no muting of these static noises. That would be really irritating if we were using this as a walkie-talkie. And don't worry, you won't hear those noises once the digirig cable is plugged in. But the computer doesn't mind this. In fact, it helps it pick those weak signals out of the weeds for us. And that's where digital modes really shine. So I'll connect our USB side cable to the computer. And then on the digirig, there is a USB-C port for this. On the other side of the digirig, we have audio and serial options. We're not going to use cat control. We only need digital radio signals, so I'm going to plug this into audio. Before we plug into the radio transceiver, we need to turn it off because we could potentially induce voltage spikes that can damage things. And we'll plug that right in. We're now ready to power up the Pi and get started. If you haven't already downloaded software and configured your DigiRig sound card within the Raspberry Pi operating system, go back and watch that video and follow those instructions before coming here to the Pi checklist. Step 6 deals with setting up the FL Digi software. So let's get into our Pi and open FL Digi. It'll be here under Ham Radio. When we first open this software, it's going to give us a configuration wizard. Click Next and we'll enter our call sign. This will be a shared terminal between me and my wife here at our home, so I'll input both of our call signs so that we'll both be covered regardless of who's transmitting. In the next window, we'll select our DigiRig sound card by first activating port audio and then selecting USB audio device from the list. It's not going to make it easy on us and call it the DigiRig, but we'll select USB audio device. Next, we'll enable the audio alerts and leave this as default. The reason being, if you went in here and selected another USB sound card, like a USB speaker or the headphone jack, and there was something wrong with that, there is a glitch that will keep FL Digi from opening. So let's keep this as default. And then down here on the speaker icon, you'll right click and you'll activate whichever device you want the audio alerts to come on. Here, I'm going to use the speakers on the HDMI monitor. From there, we're pretty much done with this configuration wizard. I could click next and activate FL Rig as the client for push to talk with this software, but we're not using an HF transceiver with cat control, so I don't need this. So let's click finish, and then we'll continue our setup from here. Back in our checklist, and this is not going to be an exhaustive list because a lot of these settings are just simply customization settings based on your preference, but we've already finished selecting the sound card device. We'll go back into the configuration dialog and we'll set up hardware push to talk. So configure, config dialog. We can verify here under sound card and devices that all of the settings we just input are still there. We'll go up to rig control and then hardware PTT. This was a very difficult thing to figure out back when I first started this because there weren't instructions online for how to set up a digi rig with FL Digi, but we're going to use separate serial port PTT. We'll use RTS because that's what the DigiRig likes. And we're going to select the DigiRig again. It's not going to be easy and tell us DigiRig, but it will say USB-Silicon underscore labs, etc. Then we'll click Initialize. Very important step. Let's continue down the list. It gives us some instructions to customize our waterfall appearance and our fonts and colors under UI. I'll show you where to find those, and you can adjust those on your own time. So up here under fonts and colors, we have RXTX. We can change this ugly yellow and blue and the text color to whatever we want. And then down here under waterfall, you can click display. We could change whatever color we want for the waterfall. For example, I like the green one. We'll open that and it instantly changed it. We could change the height of the waterfall, maybe take a little burden off the processor, especially if we're using a slow computer. I'll make that smaller note. It's not going to change now. It'll change at next program startup. And maybe we can narrow down the waterfall a little bit too so that less processing needs to take place. I like those settings. And then I will often magnify. There we go. 
That looks really nice. Let's get back in our configuration. Go down the list here. It tells us to add a half a second pre-signal tone. This is so that it opens up the transmitter with just a blank tone before it starts sending out those digital radio signals. That can help reduce some decoding errors on the other end. So we want to go up to IDs and RSID and we'll adjust the pre-signal tone here to half a second. We can click save from here. Back in our checklist, it directs us to go to view, rig slash log controls, and set it to none. And that is because we're not using cat control, so we don't need all these controls up here taking up window space. So we can go here and remove it. That's going to give us a lot more space to read and write. Now, let's adjust our audio settings from the radio. First of all, let's remove this transmit attenuator. We don't need that for what we're doing. Set it to zero. It comes defaulted at either negative three or negative 12. Next, I want to show you a couple things. This is a volume indicator and a little diamond here indicating if we're overdriving. It's red right now, so this tells us our volume is way too high. We are overdriving the sound card. This is going to interfere with the computer's ability to decode weak signals. So the FL Digi help file directs us to start by changing this to negative 20 and increasing this to 70. Now we're going to click on WF twice until it says SIG, and you can see this is way overdriven. All of these are squaring off at the tops and bottoms. We actually want to get the signal in between the upper line and lower line. So I'm going to reach over to the radio, and I'm going to start turning down the volume dial until this looks a little bit nicer. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're going to see a couple things on the screen change. First of all, those waveforms are going to go down, down, down until they're mostly in between the upper and lower. And I think that's probably good. We saw this go down to about negative 20. This may be a little bit different depending on which version of FL Digi you downloaded. And also our diamond turned to green, so our sound card is no longer overdriven. It may work with your volume maxed. It may do okay for a little bit, but it's not going to really pull in those weak signals as good as it possibly can. Let's then go back over here and click once on SIG and it'll return us back to the waterfall and you'll see the appearance changed a little bit. Let's then close FL Digi and reboot our computer to maximize our chances at success. So we'll close. Yes, it might lag a little bit here. And then we're going to shut down and reboot. We'll come back after that's done. After the reboot, we can come back and reopen FL Digi. And in fact, we could right click on FL Digi and add a shortcut to the desktop. We're going to set up FSQ. We won't do a deep dive right now into FSQ, but we'll get the basic setup so we can start using it. So let's switch over here to FSQ in op mode. We'll start with 4.5. That's a good standard speed. One of the cool things about FSQ is that you can decode any other station's transmission regardless of speed. You don't have to match it. We'll turn FSQ on so we don't get any more of this garbage up here. And we're going to slide this squelch lever up to about one-fifth to one-quarter of the way up. That seems to work fine. Maybe different for your system. We can open the configure dialog again, go to modems, and FSQ. There's a few settings that I really like to change here to maximize my success. First of all, you can change herd aging if you want stations that pop up here in your herd list to disappear after a while. We'll leave it at never for right now. We're going to increase the timeout time to the maximum just in case there's noise interference, and we'll crank this up as well. I don't need this. We can just delete that. And I don't need audit logs. Okay, we'll save that. Now, when you use FSQ, you can accidentally knock the waterfall off here. See, I've just changed that accidentally to 1222. So I could still send, and it's going to come across over here, but for some reason, FL Digi doesn't move that over with the waterfall. So there's going to be problems there if I don't slide that back. We'll go into how you could do that remotely later, but for right now, we're going to move this back. And we're going to move these macro keys up higher. We're going to use the macro keys a lot, but I don't want them down here where the waterfall is so that I might accidentally bump the frequency off on the waterfall. So let's go into our config dialog. And I believe we're down here in UI, macro buttons, and we're going to move that above the TXRX. Now that our macro buttons are all up top and away from the waterfall, we can right click on them to bring up the macro editor. 
So I'll just delete everything here because I don't need any of this. And we can change the name of it to start with. I'll input my wife's Volvo. And we're going to, over here in the macro text window, insert the go frequency command. What that's going to do for us is if I mess up and I move the waterfall off of 1500, this will just bring it back the next time I use it. So let's find it here. And here it is right here. We'll use this button to slide it on over. We're going to place NNNN with 1500. Then we'll type the call sign for her car on here. And the pound sign will trigger that system to give us a response. It'll give us that acknowledgement. If you leave this off, it's just going to receive the message, but not tell you that it received it. I'll put a space here. And one of the other things we like to do is input the time. That is up here, local time. We'll slide that over, and we can delete this part because we don't need to format it differently. At the end, remember to put a space just for clarity. We'll click Apply and then Close. That changed this up here. So let's give this a try here. Let's see if it works. I'm just going to hit Enter. We'll see if that transmits. It looks like it's working on my radio. We'll see if a response comes back through. And there it is. came right through. In a moment, we'll see the response come right back up here. Remember I said you have to have patience with digital modes. There it is. You didn't hear a chime this time because we haven't yet set up the audio alerts. We'll go into that in the next video. Notice that over here, her call sign popped up in our herd list. It's where we can right click and we could do something like send an SNR, signal to noise ratio request. That'll just automatically transmit out. And it's returned our signal to noise ratio as 25 decibels over the noise floor. Over here, you can see in the herd list, our station hears the Volvo at 44 decibels. That's a good loud signal. That's because it's about 20 feet away from this computer right now. That's fine. And with that, FL Digi is up and running. You can continue to edit your macros. And you can do all sorts of fun things with that. Play around, do some experimentation, and join me in the next episode of The Terminal Element when we set up those notification settings.